yeah, so as Dave said, um, my name's Phil Carlisle, I work for Historic England, um, and, but I'm here today to talk about the Arches Project, which um, I've been involved with since 2012. So what is Arches? Um, it was a project that was set up originally by the Getty Conservation Institute um, with help from the World Monuments Fund and was intended to um, be a global um, historic environment record for, um, it originally started for the invasion of Iraq. Um, they realised that with the invasion, a lot of um, looting had been going on, so they wanted a HER for Iraq. Um, it was never implemented, although it was built, um, but it became something called Mega Jordan, which is the Middle East um, geo database for antiquities in Jordan. Um, and that was very much just a GIS with a few attributes for the data. Um, what it became was um, a full web-based geospatial information system for the management and recording of cultural heritage. It's an open source software platform um, which is based on international standards. It's been purpose-built for the international cultural heritage field and has been designed to record all types of immovable heritage. Um, it can also do um, artifacts, so portable heritage as well, movable heritage, and lots of other things. This is the software stack, the technology stack it's built on, so it's all open source, um, which means it's free, but it's free like a puppy, not free like a beer. <laughs> so you do have to feed it, basically. Um, the aims of the project, um, it's been designed to serve a number of purposes. Um, mainly to fulfil the Getty Conservation Institute's remit, which is the preservation, protection, understanding, appreciation and management of heritage places. Uh, identification and inventory. Um, it's, it's described as a heritage, heritage inventory management system, but that's kind of not true anymore. It's not just about dots on maps and where things are and attributes associated with that. We're currently working on casework and consultation modules um, for use by local government ATRs, mainly for Greater London Historic Environment Record, which I'll talk about as well. Um, the design principles behind it were that it needed to be economic, that it was customisable and flexible, and you'll see, um, hopefully, I'm going to try and do a live demo, you'll see some of the um, flexibility in action. Accessible and easy to use, and standards based. So this is basically intended, you know, you should be able to just download this and hit the ground running from day one. The standards that it's based on um, are originally this, the International Core Data Standard for Archaeological and Architectural Heritage, which itself is a combination of two standards, the Core Data Standard for Archaeological Sites and the, um, I think it's the Data Standard for Historic Buildings, but they were, the, we've merged them together through CDOC. And it's also based on this which is terrifying. Um, we, we, um, we said, you want to do what? You want to build a database based on the CRM instead of just building a database and then mapping it to the CRM so your data's... And they went, yeah. And we went, no, no, it can't be done. Well, it can, actually, and it's quite useful because it means you don't have to go through that mapping process and all the semantics give you um, a far more flexible system. Uh, so the CRM... Um, it's, I think it's more than 89 classes and more than 151 properties now because things like influence and space-time volume and presence and strange, strange things to do with strange, strange things that Martin Dorr thinks are, are in there now. Uh, but this is the overall thing. So it's an event-based ontology. So the temporal entities, things happen. Um, people participate in those events. These events have time spans, they occur at places, they refer or affect conceptual objects and physical things, which also have location. And you can refer to them using names, appellations, and then you can say what they are by typing them, which is obviously important for those of us who are interested in control vocabularies. Uh, Archers uses graph theory to implement the CRM, so there are nodes which represent the classes, um, edges represent the properties, the node edge nodes triples are combined to form branches, and branches are combined to form resource models. So this is um, a typical branch. So you have a monument here. Is there a pointer thing? Where's the red dot? Yeah. So this is a physical thing, and it's identified by a name, and the name has a type, 
and the type is listed in a control vocabulary. So we've got the Palace of Westminster, and that's the primary name for what is commonly known as the House of Commons and the House of Lords. And um, that primary would be in a list which would include something like alternative, pseudonym, subriquet, whatever. This is the full graph, um, the full resource model for a person. So we've got the, the, that is the thing, the real life person itself, which has a name, it has a death, or it can have a death, um, it can be located, it can have a contact point. Then there aren't normally rights associated with a person, but you never know. Um, external cross references, date of birth, father, mother, place of birth, and then this is the details of the record that has been compiled for that person. So they're quite funky looking things, they're slightly different to relational databases, obviously. Um, so I'll just kind of quickly go through what the platform is and then we will try and do a demo. Um, so yeah, so um, you can manage your system settings, um, you can add a new resource, you can um, use this thing called the Artist Designer, which is where you build the graphs and the branches. Uh, you can manage your map layers. Um, so it comes with a built-in GIS, but it's very very limited. It doesn't give you the full functionality of a, um, something like Esri, uh, Mark GIS. But it does allow you to download open street maps, view, view your data against the map, um, draw polygons, draw buffer zones, blah, blah, blah the usual GIS stuff. Um, crucially, it has this thing called the Reference Data Manager, which um, was built to my specification, because I wanted to play with something nice. And um, we're going to be able to add images to our vocabulary soon. So these are the fish vocabularies. Um, when we build the source of cultural heritage, which is a dream that I've had for many years, we'll be able to add images and documents and everything that become not just a word list and not just a lookup in your database, but an actual decent encyclopedic resource for cultural heritage. So, let's see. Um, I'm not I'm not used one of these machines before. I'm used to an old brick. So. Um, and there's no mouse on this, which may, may cause problems, but we'll see. So what I'll do is I'll show you um, a live, this is, this is um, Lincoln, um, Lincoln City of Lincoln, which was the first um, historic environment record to implement archers. It's very much, um, it was based on an old urban archaeology database, which was then um, bodged to hold historic environment record data. <coughs> Oh, is that a mouse? Yes, yeah. Brilliant, thank you. So it's very, it, 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 it's, um, it, it is quite literally monuments, events, archive, data for the beautiful city of Lincoln. The mad cousin in the attic of the East Midlands, as we like to say from Nottingham. Um, so it has various ways of searching. This is um, very much is this, is this actually live? Yeah, we're going. <laughs> normally, I um, normally um, use, usually run this in Chrome, so this is the first time we've run it in. IE, I'm hoping that the IE, <laughs> the, the IE advice, um, yeah, the IE version is is, is good enough, um, and I'm thinking maybe not. No. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, exactly. But it's not not with Chrome on it, and I tried to do it on my laptop. I could put it on my laptop actually, but um, the screen resolution was um, ridiculous, so I'm having to do it on here. Um, but yeah, so we let's do a, see if we can do it. Pardon? Yeah, not brilliant, are you? No. Can I download Chrome onto this machine? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Any questions while we're, <laughs> while we're waiting, waiting for the idiot um, boy to solve himself problems? Not this idiot boy, this idiot boy. <laughs> yeah. Never work with children, animals, or live internet. Or like, exactly, yeah, that's why I've sort of like, you know. The question is, whose laptop is that? I don't know. I it's assume it's Ben's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's Firefox. Firefox, any good for you? Uh, might be, yeah. Um, um, but this should be pretty fast. Chrome is. It's so, it's so up to date and cool that it only works on the latest versions of technology. There we are, that's better. So, um, so this is, um, as you can see, this is Lincoln, it's a city, so you can imagine that the, the distribution map is quite sparse for everywhere else, so there should be no more points anywhere. No, good. Um, it clusters, so it's quite, um, quite quick, actually, to, to work. So what we'll do is we'll do a quick search. So. Um, just like Ariadne, there's a, a Google style um, elastic search um, box which allows you to um, I mean I've just selected a concept there so that's the actual concept of pub rather than just the word pub um, so it's gone away and it's found 284 results all of which should be pubs in Lincoln. Um, I can narrow it down by doing a time-based search as well, so I can put in some dates um, and I can specify what kind of date it is if I wanted to or I just go in and some blah blah blah, you know. It's very, it's very specific on the dates at the moment. What we are implementing is, um, this is the time wheel, so this allows you to block out time dates by century periods. You can label these as much as you like. It also gives you a quick snapshot of how many of your records fall into each period. So if I select, there we go, just narrowed that down by using the time filter, which is that century there, I believe. So yeah, so as you can see, we've got an early Roman with three Roman buildings that fall within the 200 period time span. Um, and they're obviously used as pubs. Or they are on the site of pubs that are currently there today. So that's that's just your basic search. You can then save that search and um, just cut, just send the URL to somebody. So this is going to be the, the new way that um, Lincoln will be sharing their data with contractors will be by just sending them a URL for the actual results of a search and then the contractors will be able to log into the system remotely and see the full records um, and for public searching um, they'll just be able yeah you can set up these kinds of common searches so i think if we went if we go back to um, the, the home page if i can get back to the home page which i probably can't now but there you go um, you will have seen at the bottom there was a, a map search, a time search, and then saved searches. And I think they've set up Roman li Roman Lincoln search so that you can search automatically. So that's Lincoln. It's very, um, as I say, it's not a massive data set. It's very. It was the first HER to launch. If we just go back to um, pub, if I select a record um, and look at the related resources, 
then you get to see uh, this, which is Boris, Boris the Spider. So here we can see this is the pub, and then it has relationships with, um, there's a bi bi bibliographic source there, and if you hover over the relationship, it will tell you that um, this bibliographic source refers to the high street. Um, this map refers to, or this archive source of Lincoln's Inn refers to this particular building as well. And we think that hours will be lost by people eventually because it's kind of Wikipedia-esque. So if you click on any of these other nodes, especially if it's a map, for example, then you see that, you know, you might start off at the high street, but you'll end up at Rome and, you know, a, a, a bibliographic resource. And, um, yeah, you can just follow these through. And it's very useful things like architects, where you can see the buildings that have been built by a particular architect. Or, you know, um, you could do this many for many different ways and wonderful things. But it's quite handy to just see the relation, to actually see the relationships between your data that's already there in the thing. So that's a whistle-stop tour. You can go to this site and, and, and search around. It's arcade.lincoln.gov.uk. But what I'll do now is I'll now take you in to the back end, as it were, and show you some of the flexibility that we can get with archers. I think that's right. Right, so this is um, this is my sandbox version, which is slightly more, um, slightly newer version. It's four point three, so this is the latest version. And so I've come into the artist designer, and as you can see, I've got all of these branches. So this is the birth branch, for example. So here we can see we've got a birth which has a mother um, who has a name, we have a place, uh, we have a birth time span, um, and we have a father who has a name. Um, and that graph, I could, I could build it in this way if I wanted to, represent it as a, as a graph like that. But with this new, um, this new way of building the graphs by using a kind of almost uh, Windows Explorer way it's, it's very simple it's simplified it down now rather than um using the um the rather quaint as it is now um way that we used to model it but the good thing is that once i've modeled that then that automatically gives me a ui so i've had to do no work i've just built the graph and the graph automatically gives me a data entry form and that data entry form can then be built up into resource models. So if we look at um, the resource model for a person, so this is the full model for a person. So a person has a death, it has a birth, they have an address, they have a name, etc. So here I've got. Um, the UI for my per person's name, and it will show eventually. So it allows me to say, right, okay, I've got these, I've got these elements in my name. Um, actually, I want title. For, I want title first, so I move title to the top. Uh, I need then it need it should be forename, uh, middle name, surname, epithet. Now do that. And that's actually now changed the UI. So what I've just done there, I asked our IT guys to add a, a field to a system in our new in our old database. It took a business change request. It then took six weeks of developer time. It then took a week of testing to get that done. And I, who am not IT related at all, can do that now in my system in five minutes without having to go to an IT guy and say, can I have some developer time? And at the moment, developer time is exceptionally, you know, um, rare in, in our organisation. So um, it kind of allows the developers then to get on and do really, really funky stuff with databases rather than having to worry about how we manage our data. 
and we can this um, the system has been designed so it's like um, it's like Lego if you, if you imagine that's what you've got here the Archer platform gives you a box of Lego one of the old style boxes of Lego that got all the different bits and all the different colors in it also then you know if you want to you can then get the manual for the Millennium Falcon and you can build the Millennium Falcon from your big box of Lego but what you're not doing is giving people the Millennium Falcon and only the bits for the Millennium Falcon. That's the joy of this. You can, you can use the building blocks that this gives you and build pretty much anything you want. And we have done. We've um, built something for um, oblique aerial photographs to show those. We're currently um, building um, a, a replica of our Oracle database so that we can migrate from a burning platform into Arches so that we can make that data available. We're going to be using this for maritime, um, the National Marine, the National Maritime Historic Environment Record, which is um, taking a very um, small, strange, um, strangely formatted data set with, because it was wet stuff going into a dry database and we kind of had to bodge the data. So we're taking that out and then we're going to rethink the way that we do um, marine um, recording in, in England and um, it's very exciting, actually, very exciting stuff. We will ho hopefully be able to show some of that later. Um, and then this, m this is the most, um, probably one of the most exciting bits about it at all. This is, this is the mobile survey manager. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to say, okay, we've got a project in the field. Um, we're gonna be looking at windmills in Lincolnshire. So um, we need to know what windmills we've got already so we can create a survey a project and say right okay we're going to call this windmills we're going to have a start date an end date description we can specify on the map so we can sort of like geospatially um, sort of like you know, target an area uh, we can say what kind of resources we want to be able to record in this project we want to download the data that we've already got that fulfill the criteria and then we can set, we can assign users to fill that data we then activate the survey. Our survey teams download um, that project to their version on their tablet or on their laptop or on their phone or whatever. Go out into the field, create new records, amend the current records, come back into the office, click a button on their laptop to sync the data and that's automatically goes straight into our system. That project then becomes an event which then goes to um, the OASIS system so that the event record for that particular project is already there in OASIS and it already links to all of the monuments that are involved in it. So it's very joined up in that, in that sense. And the thing about this as well is that the project workflows that come through this, because this is kind of a project workflow system, can be tweaked and modified to, to suit many different kinds of workflows. So the consultation process will be used something, it won't be using this particular mobile survey manager, but it will be using the engine that this is driven by to create a workflow um, to allow us to record the way that we deal with consultations and casework in the Great London Historic Environment Record. Um, as, you, as you can imagine with any system, it's got a full um, audit trail, um, which is locked down. You've got profile managers, so you can you can specify who um, who's allowed to do what, and you can do you can set permissions at a node level, at a at an, a single field level. So if you want people to only be able to change one field in a form, the information in that field, you can lock down the entire thing and just sort of say yes, actually, I only want you to go in and modify the description. The rest of the information stays exactly the same. Um, there's no licenses associated with this system at all, so therefore um, you can have as many users as you want. You're not limited to, to how many users you can have. And again, you can have external volunteer users coming into the system uh, because any data that is added automatically gets um, goes into a, a, a QA system um, so that if we look, if I do... Let's search. 
so there's no there's no um, data in this um, instance at all. It's just a test box. But as you can see here, we've got a QA type, and so there are two records that have been um, added by somebody who obviously at the moment don't, doesn't have the right rights. So I can now go in and check that um, data. And if I think it's okay, if I've got the right permissions, I can then um, say that that's great, you know, brilliant, we'll have that, we'll include that data in. And then as soon as I click the button, it then becomes available for everyone to see. Um, so that means that volunteers can enhance your data and do your work for you, as it were. Um, and then when you're happy that they're trained up to such a level that they can you know, be a trusted user, then you can switch their permissions so that their data just goes straight in instead of just being provisional data. And also, also you know, training new staff um, in the use of the database, it's quite useful to be able to sort of like make sure that they, um, they can walk before they start running. Um, you can, yeah, here you can pretty much manage all of the systems, settings, um, as long as you've got the, the right permission. And as I said, this is the um, reference data manager, which um, allows you to create new thesauri, or you can import the thesaurus in. It imports in SCOS format. Um, from thesauri, you can create collections, which are actually what are used in the forms. So you can have a, a massive thesaurus of 7,000 uh, monument types as we have here but you can say actually I only want people to use 15 so you'd set up a collection with those 15 concepts in and um, and you might you might want to say okay for this particular form I want this part of the hierarchy and for this particular form I want another part so you can break it down like that um, and you can search for concepts um, you can add images to concepts. You can also um, import concepts in through a Sparkle endpoint. Um, so if we go to a thesaurus and just here. So here, for example, um, I can go away and I can search for a term in the Getty AAT. And there's no reason why we can't point this at um, heritagedata.org, for example. So. So, um, so yeah, so it's a really good way actually for us to, to manage data. And as I say, if I now ex if I create something in this and export it, it's exported as SCOS straight away. So again, the linked data possibilities are endless. Um, we are using we are we will be using this reference data manager, just this part of the, the software, as the um, the tool to build the source of cultural heritage, which is going to go on. The, the heritagedata.org um, website or URL, URL I suppose because the website is being brought in-house into Historic England but it will allow us for once um, to be able to create collaboratively for Sorai so Dave, Pete and myself can sit in our respective countries and build one thesaurus without having to sit around a table looking at spreadsheets and um, word files so it's going to be a really great collaborative tool that we can add images to and everything um, add, add all that extra value as it were so um, that's a whistle stop tour and I'm sorry it's a bit frantic um, but you know we got there in the end um, yeah that's me <laughs>